Hi guys, welcome back. Now time to time, I'm gonna do an England only video. That's my team, so I'm gonna get carried away sometimes. And what I've been thinking about is selection strategy. Now this is very true for, for all of the teams, uh, but I'm gonna use England here as an example, is how are they gonna get through the pool stages? How are they gonna utilize their players best? Now England have got Tonga and USA first up, and they're the tight turnaround, that four day turnaround I've been talking about in the pool videos. Um, now, as with many tier one teams, they've got the slightly easier turnaround, uh, but it's still quite tricky to manage, and how do I think they're gonna select to manage that situation? So let's start with the front row. Now I would start Marla, George, and Sinclair in the first game. In fact, for Tonga, I'm pretty much gonna go mainly what I think is the first choice. Although I don't think you can go completely that, and I'll come on to that in a minute. But Marla, George, and Sinclair, I don't really wanna play Marla and Cole together at any time ideally, just because I think they are a little bit slow together. Um, but Genj, Cowan, Dickie, and Cole on the bench. Vinopola, you can see, will come into the equation later on, hopefully, in Argentina and France. Um, I think you do want to get Vinopola playing as soon as he is fit, because um, firstly, like Billy Vinopola, he gets fitter with game time. Plus, with hamstrings, if they're going to go sometimes, they're just going to go. Um, it's to do with the power, how the power is applied through the hamstring. The hamstring actually stops the leg extending and has a massive power spike. So if the scar tissue isn't properly healed, then you know it can create a weakness and a rip there. Um, so sometimes, once they're past fit, they really just have to play. Um, and if it's going to go, sometimes it's going to go. Anyway... I would get Singleton involved in the action in the USA game. Um, I don't know if maybe uh, Jones would put George on the bench just in case, but I think getting every player involved in the first two games is important. Um, not all teams will be able to do that because they might feel they need to play their stronger teams more, but that Tonga USA uh, turnaround does give England a chance and a, an excuse really to play all their players. So I think that's a very important move to make. On to the second row, and I'd start with a Toji and Cruz, that best pairing, and Laws on the bench I do think offers the most impact, so I'd go with that. And then I'd go with Laws Launchbury to start that second test, and I'd probably save a Toji actually and not make him double up at all with Cruz on the bench. Now in the back row, it's interesting because there's only five back row, so one of them's going to have to double up. You could move a second row into the back row, but that would still mean, mean someone's gonna to have to double up, play, you know, start one game, and then four days later, start another game. That is really tough. Um, they picked us an extra back three, so they could carry um, Noel, if you like, with his injury, but it does mean they're short in areas like this, so hopefully England will get away with it. Um, so I'm gonna start Wilson, Curry, and Vinopola, who I think at the moment are probably the first choice players. And I'm going to go with Wilson there to double up because of his fitness. Plus, I think he does need to play eight um, in at least one game. I don't know why he didn't in one of the warm-ups. Well, I know why. is because they wanted to get loads of game time in Billy. But it was at the expense of Wilson getting game time at eight. And then there's obviously going to be a conversation over whether Underhill starts or Wilson starts in that Argentina and France game but that will probably be solved over those two games. We can look at the backs all in one lot because their selections do have knock-on effects on each other. I've had many comments saying Ford Farrell is England's best um, option with Tua Lange at 13 and it's a good shout. The problem is I don't think you can start Ford Farrell in that first game against Tonga because that means they're both starting and then four days later one of them's going to have to double up. You've only got two fly halves. You don't want to risk one by forcing them to start again, I think, four days later. So it would make more sense for me for going Farrell to Alangi Slade. Slade's fit apparently anyway. And then maybe introduce some Ford Farrell later in the game. Because Ford's going to have to play in that second game. It's going to have to be Hines and Ford in that second game for sure. Um, and then in the second game as well, Francis and Joseph, I would start them as a pairing. So everyone's got game time. And you've tried all the options then. You've tried uh, Tuolangi Slade. You've tried Ford Farrell Tuolangi. And then you've given Francis and Joseph a run as well. And then from that, you can select whether you start Ford Farrell Tuolangi or maybe um, for, uh, Farrell Tuolangi Slade in those bigger games later in the port. So I think that should be the way it should go. 
I could see that working very well. The back three, now I've, I've left Daly in there at 15 and I've had loads of comments saying Watson should play 15. And I've thought about it and I still think Daly should play 15. I really think he's integral to how England want to play the game. He acts as a bit of a, a Vili LaRue type 15 where he can move from side to side, be the extra playmaker or be the strike runner. And I think that's what England need. Now when Watson played 15, he played very well. But he really comes in mainly as a strike runner, which is great, which is what he does. And the other reason I don't think he should start in the Tonga game is so he can get a run at 15 in that second game against the USA. And I think you are right as well in the comments. Johnny May should start. I had selected Watson and uh, Thokonasiga over him initially, but yeah, no, he's too good to miss out. So I think May, Thokonasiga, Daly, I'm going to start with. Give Watson a go in that second game so he doesn't have to do double up. McConaughey can play, and someone's going to have to double up because Noel's still not fit by then, apparently, which is a real shame. So I'm going to go uh, Thokonasiga, but just because... I wouldn't say he's a nailed on starter, so I'm kind of making him uh, double up over four days, which is, is pretty harsh, but someone's going to have to do it. Now, obviously, form and injury is going to influence who starts in those big games against Argentina and France. But anyway, I want you guys to let me know what you think about the selection strategy. Would you play everyone over those first two games like I'm doing there? Would you double up more players? Would you experiment with different combinations? Anyway, guys, let me know what you think, and until next time, I will see you then.